Hey there guys. Today I'm going to be getting back to one of my all-time favorite subjects, which as many of you know is rainwater harvesting. And in this video I'm going to be installing a pre-made rainwater harvesting kit on my shipping container playhouse that I built several years ago. It has since become slightly less of a playhouse and more of just a cool hangout spot and perhaps is going to be an office or some sort of vacation rental in the future. But anyway, the rainwater harvesting kit I got from tankdepot.com. They sent me the kit and a tank with it and I'm going to try to make this like a tutorial style video with all of the steps that you might need to consider in each stage of the process from installing the gutters to locating your tank and uh, doing the first flush and all of that cool stuff. So that's what I'm going to do. I'll start out uh, showing you what comes in the kit and then I will start from the gutters on down to the tank and at the end I'll show you it uh, hopefully functioning flawlessly. So before I start installing anything, let's take a quick look at the rainwater harvesting kit that Tank Depot sent to me. It includes a water level gauge for your water tank, a vent screen for your overflow piping, a valve setup so that you can actually utilize the water that's in your water tank, a high water level overflow kit that is going to allow you to get more capacity in your tank as well as allow the overflow water a route to escape the tank and then a leaf and debris filter which is what you may be somewhat familiar with that will mount on the side of whatever structure you're collecting off of and then lastly there is a first flush setup uh, this one's really nice. It includes lots of different adapters for various size pipes. And then finally, a tank of the size that you choose with an inlet screen to further keep any uh, things out of your tank that you may not want in there. So before we get to setting up the actual physical components of the rainwater harvesting system, there are a few things you're gonna to wanna to consider first that are going to help guide what kind of system that you ultimately set up and how it's best going to serve you. Number one, what do you hope to use this water for? Are you hoping to use it for landscaping and gardening and utility purposes? Or are you hoping to use it like I do for my personal home as my primary water source where I'm also cooking and using it for drinking water as well? Because once you have that figured out, you're also going to want to consider what kind of roofing surface you're collecting from. For instance, a metal roof as I have, or a tile roof, or a slate roof, tend to lend themselves well for ultimately being able to be used for potable water use, and that is because they don't uh, involve an oily substrate like asphalt or emulsion mix. Um, but if you are going to be using, uh, say, a shingle or composite or built up um, asphalt roof, you might still be able to use that water fine for gardening or landscape or uh, utility purposes, but you're just going to want to do a little bit extra research to make sure that it is going to be suitable for the ultimate needs that you're hoping to use it for. In addition to that, you're also going to want to consider where you plan to ultimately locate your water tanks. For this example, I have the tank directly next to the structure and we are going to be using what I call a dry pipe or a direct pipe method for the downspouts, meaning the downspouts are going to go directly from the gutters to the water tank just lowering an elevation and there's no water ever held in the pipes other than when it's raining. But there is another method that I'll show you some clips from my own personal house where I have the tanks removed from the structure a ways and the downspouts go down into the ground run to the water tanks and then up out of the ground into the water tanks. It's a little bit more of an evolved method, but it is simply just uh, a change in elevation from the inlet from the gutters to the outlet where the tanks are. As long as uh, the outlet is lower than the inlet, the water will flow through. But for the purposes of this example, we'll stick to the dry pipe method because it's a little more simple and uh, probably what most people are going to set up. 
And the last thing you're going to want to consider is what you are setting the water tank on. In this case, I have a raised platform, but that is definitely going to be an exception to the rule. Probably 95% of folks are just going to set it on the ground and it will be fine just like that. However, if you do have erosion prone soils or really sandy soils, you may want to consider building up a little platform with landscape timbers, filling it with gravel so that water can pass through and still allow the tank to have a solid foundation. Now with the considerations aside, the first physical component of the rainwater harvesting system is obviously going to be installing gutters to the structure you want to collect from. In this case, you're going to see me using standard 4-inch gutters that you might find at most big box stores. But if you're going to be collecting off of a home or a workshop, I would highly recommend you consider using a 5 or 6 inch gutter as the larger gutter will help to prevent water from skipping over the gutter when you start incorporating slope into your gutter run. And regarding slope, the conventional wisdom is roughly between 1 8 and 1 quarter inch of slope for every 10 foot section of gutter. Um, but if you're doing a small structure like this, I think it's totally fine to just eyeball it. Just so long as there's a little amount of slope and water's not going to be sitting in the gutter, it's going to work just fine. The last thing you're going to want to consider is to make sure that the bottom of your gutters is level to where the gutters are going to be able to have maximum capacity. Um, whenever you have fascia board that is angled in somewhat, you are going to have the gutters leaning down and you'll see me using screws to accomplish this. I just setting up the screws where it's going to shim the gutter out to keep that lower portion of the gutter level to the ground. So after you get your gutters installed, the next step you're going to take is to run your downspouts to wherever you want to locate your leaf filter. This is going to keep any leaves, debris, and bugs outside of the system before the water gets to the first flush. And in this case, I've just run it along to this side of this structure because this is where I want to locate the tank. Probably more traditionally, you'll have this come down and just be on the same face as the gutter is. Now once you get your downspout run installed, you're going to want to have at least 5 to 6 inches below the last coupler or joint in this downspout run. And that is going to allow for the top cap of the leaf filter to slide up that PVC pipe so that you can open this lid and clean out the filter mesh and the leaf guard. And I'll show you a few clips of that now, how those pop out and can be maintained. And it is important because this top cap not only makes it kind of look finished, but it also keeps birds uh, from nesting in there and uh, basically just keeps extra debris out of there other than what gets in your gutters. Now after you get your leaf and debris guard installed, the next step in the system is going to be installing the first flush component. And this is primarily made up of this chamber that has three openings. One is the inlet from your leaf guard. One goes down to your first flush pipe that collects all of the dirty uh, first flush water. And I'll probably include some clips to explain that better after this. And then this outlet right here goes to your tank uh, with hopefully all of the clean water that doesn't have any bugs or leaves in it and also doesn't have the sediment that is going to collect in this lower first flush pipe. And uh, I'll show you how I installed this and uh, some of the uh, workings of the components down below. And a little bit of further explanation before I add the lower portion of this first flush, which is essentially the dirty water chamber. Uh, the last piece you saw me install was a little conical insert. And what that does is this ball that sits in the lower portion of the first flush, as the dirty water level rises, it goes up and it gets stopped in there, uh, basically sealing off the dirty water of the first flush water 
from the clean water that will eventually take this route onto the tank. So now I'll add the lower portion and finish out this install. Now I already explained what this plastic ball but is. But you may be wondering what these little components are for. Well this white section is a filter that allows the water in this pipe to leave at a very slow rate, much slower than the incoming water from the rain and the upper portion of the first flush. And then it has a little nozzle down here that you could attach a hose to and irrigate some plants. But the reason this is important is because it serves to keep the water out of this pipe. Uh, because depending on the length of the pipe, this could account for gallons and gallons of water, and that's a lot of weight to hold in your pipe. But it also serves a much more important purpose, and that is to allow the reset of this. So if this was just a solid cap, you would have to come and open this and drain it manually every time, versus this way, it basically resets itself and is ready for the next rain, and you don't have to maintain it all the time. So the next phase of this install is going to be adding a high water level overflow kit onto the raised sidewall of your water tank. And depending on the size tank you have, you'll likely have a lot more options than I have in this smaller 300 gallon tank. But the reason this is important is to allow the water an escape route for when the tank gets full from the inlet so that the water is not cascading down the side of the tank and eroding the base of the tank or sitting next to your house or wherever the tank is located and ultimately directing it to a place where it can be of better use such as uh, some fruit trees or uh, wherever you want that water directed to. And the advantage of something like this is that this portion will stick inside the tank and it will allow the water level to raise an additional four to five inches uh, before overflowing through here and out to wherever you're going to be directing the water to. And uh, that's pretty cool. You'll notice most tanks already have an inlet that is plumbed on the upper side. But the disadvantage of that is that they're usually very small. This is an inch and a half. And if you have three or four inch pipe uh, as your inlet for this tank, uh, it's not going to allow enough water to overflow. And you'll end up having it overflow the outsides of the tank and causing the problems I mentioned just a bit ago.
And the last little bit of this overflow run is to add this little screen to outlet. It's going to allow all of the overflow water to get out, but it will keep any mice or insects from going inside your pipes. And as I mentioned earlier, it, ideally it would be best if you could have this directed to some fruit trees or some place where you can get some benefit out of the water. But it will just allow all of that overflow to be away from the structure and the tank and hopefully in a place where you're going to benefit from it. All right, so I'm going to backfill this and then I'll probably end up dressing out uh, this area with some rocks just to kind of make it look pretty. And that's pretty much it for the overflow. This is the valve assembly that comes with the kit. It's got a simple quarter turn valve with two inch threaded adapters on either side in case you wanted to hook this up to an irrigation pump or like I do with my house to an actual house pump with a pressure tank but they also include this little garden hose adapter, the yellow one. So you can simply just hook it up to a garden hose and do some very simple irrigation, which is what I'm gonna be doing in this uh, example. And then I just got some PVC fittings, two inch, so that I can run it laterally like this so it doesn't protrude too far like that. However, if you were gonna have this on the ground and have like a little junction box over it, I would just simply run it like that. And one more turn, just to snug it up. A little bit of a tighter fit than I anticipated, but worst comes to worst, I can take the handle off this, but I don't think it's flexing it too bad. So contrary to what I just told you about the valve at the bottom of the tank being the last step of this installation, the actual last step is going to be installing this water level gauge onto the tank. You're gonna see me drill an inch and a quarter hole on top of the tank and I will drop this little float in there. And as it sits on the bottom, it will indicate when the tank is empty. And then I will hold it up flush with the bottom and then set the top indicator to show when it's full. And that is just done by popping this cap and just adjusting it with your fingers. And that's as simple as it is. And then I will test this out. And there's the first flush valve, just barely letting that water percolate through. All right guys, well I think that is gonna conclude this installation of a simple rainwater harvesting system using one of the Tank Depot rainwater harvesting kits. Hopefully it was interesting and you got some good information from it and perhaps it will inspire you to work on a rainwater harvesting project of your own. Whether it is as simple as just building a berm around a fruit tree to collect some runoff or doing something a little more involved like a kit like this 
or perhaps even a home system like I have for my house, I always think it is worthwhile to do some bit of rainwater harvesting because it's just a great resource. It falls on your roof and you might as well use it. And for those of you with a couple of questions on the kit, I did want to point out that these kits come in a variety of sizes, whether you want to use three inch pipe or four inch pipe. Um, the kit I got was a four inch slash three inch combo pipe. That's why I had lots of different adapters and you saw me using four inch and three inch combinations uh, to do this because I was trying to use a lot of the pipe that I had on hand so I didn't have to purchase extra pipe. Uh, so anyway, the kits are flexible in that manner. And for the tanks, these tanks come in all different colors. Uh, for instance, this is black, but that is because I asked them to send me the first available tank they had, because right now I am just in the midst of our monsoon season and I wanted to have something up and rolling. But these also come in tan, green, lots of different profiles and a wide variety of sizes. And they even have underground tanks, metal tanks, and whatever else so i'll put a link so you can check out their site they have a ton of resources and virtually any size tank that you could think of so uh, as always i appreciate you guys watching hit the subscribe button for similar content give me a thumbs up and also remember you can check my content out on odyssey and rumble as well so see ya